Okay, so let's go ahead and turn to page 243 together. And this section right here is actually a review from pre-calculus. So we're just going to kind of go over what our properties of logarithms and exponents is again. If I have log base b of 1, log base b of 1 is what? Zero. Oh, come on. I am ah, the stupid tablet. Come on. There. Log base b of one is zero. Okay, if I have log base b of capital A, I can do my change of base formula. This is called the change of base. And what does the change of base formula say? Well, this can become the common log of A divided by the common log of B. But I can also, I don't have to use the common log, right? Yeah, do the natural log. Natural log of A over natural log of B. Both are perfectly valid. So, for example, if I have the common, not the common, but if I have log, of 7 to the 243, well that's the same thing as the common log of 243 all divided by the common log of 7, which is the natural log of 243 divided by the natural log of 7. Okay, does that ring a bell? Okay. If I have log base 2 of 16, this can actually be computed. Uh, isn't it just Correct. 2 to the fourth power is 16. If I have ln of the square root of e, This is ln of e to the one-half power. One half. And we have a power rule, don't we? The one-half can come out front, oh, e, and, that one? and that's one. So you're left with good old one-half. So we also have what's called a power rule for logarithms. Not to be confused with the power rule of differentiation. <laughs> which says that the logarithm base b of a to the r is the same thing as r logarithm base b of a. So the rth power can come down. Okay. All right, if we have the natural logarithm of b over a cubed c, we also have several other rules. We have what's called a difference and a, uh, excuse me, a product and a quotient rule. Well, this is ln, so the base here is e. But it works for a common logarithm too. So everything I do here, the natural log would also work for the common. This is nothing more than the natural log of b minus the natural log of a cubed minus the natural log of c. Anything that's in a denominator will become a negative. Anything that's in a numerator will remain a positive. I'm not quite done. And there we go. So This is three. No, because the c is not cubed; it's the a that's cubed. So that's why it's just three natural log a minus log c. This is called re-expression of one log into many using differences and sums. 
Let's do another one. Let's do a common log this time. This works for any logarithm carry, by the way. Okay. This is equal to the common log of x plus 2 plus Okay, yeah, that becomes x to the one half. Can I just write it like this for right now? Yeah, and then all that minus log x to the um, minus again. Okay. This is a bit confusing with the differential polynomial. With the what? The polynomial that we use for. Right. We're not doing any derivatives here. We're just using uh, it. It is called the same, but it's that's why when we did the power rule for differentiation, I made sure to call it the power rule for differentiation. This becomes log of x plus two. There's nothing we can do here, McKenna. Okay, you can't split this up when it's a plus on the inside or a minus. Plus, what does this become, though? Uh, one half, common log of good old x, minus three, minus, three. minus three, log x. And that means that these two guys right here, by the way, they become like terms. They can be combined. And what does this become? Well, again, there's that plus, right? If there's a plus or a minus, you're stuck. You cannot bring down the power of 2. So, Carrie, you can't bring down this 2 power because it's x squared plus 3. Okay. It would have to be x squared times 3. And then you'd have to split it up first before you could bring down the 2. Now, what is 1 half minus 3? Negative 2 and 1 half, which is negative 5 halves, right? So this piece right here can be rewritten as negative 5 halves log x. It's because of the log x that makes them like terms. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I like, I'm looking at the, everything that's negative is in the denominator, because I thought subtracting that division. So what is negative 3 log x minus log x squared plus 3 would be another division? Well, that's right, because I have two factors in the denominator. I have an x cubed, and I have an x squared plus 3. And so since I have two factors, that's why these two pieces are negative. I know, but they're being multiplied. Right, they're being multiplied. And what my rule says, my rule says that if I have the log of 1 over mn, then this is equal to negative log m minus log n. Now there's a 1 here, so I could have preceded that with a log 1, right? But what is log 1? 0. So anything that's a denominator factor, and that's the key word there, David, factor, becomes a negative on the outside. All right, let's take something more basic than that. Let's take um, the natural logarithm of 72. Let's take a real number. 72 breaks up, doesn't it? Yeah. 72 breaks up into what? 12 and, 12 and 6. All right, so this becomes the natural log of 12 plus the natural log of 6. But 6 breaks up. 3 and 2. 12 breaks up. 3 and 4. But 4 breaks up. 2 and 2. So this becomes the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 2. So now you have how many? Yeah, 2 ln 3 plus 3 ln 2. And that's the natural logarithm of 72. Okay?
Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. All right. We need to know how to solve equations using logarithms. So let's just start with good old ln x squared equals 4. The base of the natural log is e. So this means that x squared equals e to the fourth power. This is called converting from logarithmic form into exponential form. So this form right here is logarithmic. Whereas this form right here is exponential. If you have logarithm base b of m equals a, then to convert, you take b to the a equals m. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now x is equal to plus or minus e squared by taking the square root of both sides. Both of these values happen to work in this case. Both the positive e squared and the negative e squared both work. Mm -hmm. Why do they both work? Because, because of the x squared right here. That's exactly right, Carrie plug these back in to the square and you get a positive number again. So they, they're both valid solutions. So these are both valid solutions. Okay. All right. How about natural logarithm of 1 over x plus natural logarithm of 2x cubed equals natural logarithm of 3. Well, we already have a rule here that says we can take the sum of two logs and do what with the sum of two logs? Put the insides together as a product. So this becomes the natural logarithm of 2x cubed over x equals ln 3. And this now reduces. This is natural logarithm of 2x squared equals natural logarithm of 3. What happens, not power down, but we can drop the logs. You could E both sides and say E to this equals E to this. But what does that do? Yeah, erases the powers. So x equals plus or minus square root of 3 halves. However, in this example, something doesn't work. The negative doesn't work. Because if you plug the negative back in the original carry, you can't have a negative in a logarithm. You can't. The logarithm is only defined when the inside... By the way, do you remember what the inside of a logarithm is called? The, oh, wait, wait, the... Is that really the D? Nope, it starts with an A. The R... I don't know, the argument. The <laughs> argument. So as long as the argument is greater than zero, that's what's inside the log. So that means 1 over x has to be greater than 0, but it can't be, David, if you plug in negative square root of 3 halves. So that's not a valid solution. Only the positive square root of 3 halves is a valid solution. How are we doing? Okay. Now, what happens if we have e to the x minus 3e to the x equals 0? And this is an x. So x e to the x minus 3 e to the x equals 0. What can we do here? Nope. Can't do that yet. Power down. Nope, because there's no logarithm to use a power down. Oh, I think more algebra 1 and 2. No. We have a common factor of e to the x. So we factor out e to the x. So now we use what's called the zero product property. 
which says that if a times b equals 0, then a equals 0 or b equals 0, right? So that means that e to the x may be 0 or x minus 3 may be 0. So x equals 3 is a solution. Now what are the solutions to this? That's when now we can effectively take a natural log. So we have x equals natural logarithm of 0. Nope. Nope. Converting from log exponential form to logarithmic form. If you have a to the b equals y, then this means the logarithm base a of y is equal to b. So that's converting from exponential to logarithmic. So what is the base here? Well, it's e. The power is x, and the value over here is 0, so this becomes x equals natural log 0. But natural log 0, what is that? Type that in your calculator. It's undefined. There is no real number associated with natural log 0. So this is not a valid solution. That can never happen, McKenna. And all you have to do to know that is if you look at the graph of e to the x, it never crosses the x-axis. So it can never equal 0. Two e to the five x equals eight. Let's solve this. What do I do? Thank you. Nope, there is no logarithm, therefore the power rule does not apply. Uh, uh, natural log? No. Not yet. No. Oh. Divide by 2. So e to the 5x equals... Now the natural log is possible because the 2 has been removed. So now natural log of e to the 5x equals natural log of 4. And then divide by 5. So x equals 1 fifth of ln 4. Because that would say, why is it why is it not ln four fifths? Because the four, would you agree that right here the four is in? You can write it as this ln four okay. over five. You cannot write it as this. Yeah, yeah. That's not valid. No. Dividing by a number doesn't put the number in the log. Okay? All right. Let's try the following. Let's say we have logarithm, common log of x squared plus common log of x equals 30. What do we do? No. Well, mm, I take that back. You can use power down, yes. So I, I have to... Okay, so if we did power down, then what would happen here? 2 log x plus log x. And that makes them like... No. 3 log x. 3 log x. So if I power down, this becomes 2 log x plus log x equals 30. Oh, so, so you this divide by 3. You divide by 3. 2 log x equals 10. And then x equals 1. What is the base of this logarithm? Okay. So now let's convert from logarithmic form into exponential. Okay. So it's 10 to the power of x equals 10? Nope. I'll put 10 equals x. 10 to the power of 10 equals x. Okay. 
So remember, if you have logarithm base b of a equals y, that's logarithmic form, you can convert freely back and forth by saying that uh, b to the y power is equal to a. Now you can do this freely if you have a single logarithm. You can't do this if you're adding multiple logarithms together. You have to get a single logarithm. Okay? All right, try this one on your own. I'll give you a few minutes. 3 e to the negative 2x equals 9. Go ahead and solve that. First step is to do what? Um, divide, three. divide 3. Next step? Um, Natural log. So ln. What I would like you to do is to just slow down a little bit. I know that you can take the natural log here and just get negative 2x. Just slow down just a little bit and just write this step right here. Now do this. Natural log 3. So x equals. Right. Negative ln 3 over 2, which is the same as negative 1 half ln, which, by the way, is the same thing as negative ln square root of 3. But because of the negative, it's also natural log of 1 over square root of 3. Either one would be a perfectly valid, but I did it so that we could exercise our properties and get to know our properties a little bit better. They're all validly equal to each other. Because we're going to learn how to differentiate logarithmic and exponential functions, which we have not learned how to do that yet. And once we learn how to differentiate those functions, then we can actually begin to solve equations. And like the trigonometric functions, trigonometric functions have identities. So you can replace certain pieces. We've seen it multiple times, right? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, right? Well, because of the properties of logarithms, you can compress them multiply. Which, If you can compress a logarithm into a simpler form, do that before you differentiate, right? Why differentiate something super complicated, right? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Okay. Um, number, I'm out of time. However, number 33 is an excellent example, so I'm going to do this for the sake of having it in the video. Okay. This here is, these two guys here are not like terms. This is actually a square, whereas this is not. So what we do is we have to do something called u substitution. We let u equal e to the negative x. So this becomes u squared minus u equals 2. And then our algebra 2 bone kicks in. And we say u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0. And then we say, aha, we can factor that. So this is u minus 2, u plus 1 equals 0. And then we use the zero product property. And so we have u equals 2 and u equals negative 1. But we're not done because u is not the variable for which we're solving. It's actually x. So we resubstitute back and say e to the negative x equals 2, e to the negative x equals negative 1. But this is an impossibility because e to the negative x can never be negative. Just take the natural log of both sides and you'll have natural log of negative 1, which is invalid. But this is valid. We can solve this by taking the natural logarithm of both sides. So negative x equals natural logarithm of 2. So x equals negative natural logarithm of 2 or natural log of 1 half, which are both valid solutions. Okay. So you have to be careful when you're given an equation that's quadratic in form. All right. Homework's on the board. Tomorrow, you will be taking a quiz on 4.1 and 4.2 during your study hall time while I'm proctoring the PSAT. So I will have that to your study hall teacher. All right, Merry Christmas.